Hi, welcome to Metro by T-Mobile. Hi, my dad is in serious need of an upgrade. Yeah, my phone's a fossil. He needs a new phone and a new network, stat. Well, when he switches to Metro, he can get an amazing iPhone 7 with HD retina display for just $99.99 after ID validation. Wow, $99.99? Bye-bye, fossil. Requires porting of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile Network or active on Metro in past 90 days. With validation of ID, an independent database limit for per account slash household. 32 gigabyte model only. See store for details and terms and conditions. Why first precinct, Sergeant Waters? Chasing him where? Now, who is it, a police officer? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what building did he run into? What is that, 452 or 492? What was he, man armed? You are in the muster room at the 21st precinct, the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st precinct. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. No, you just stand there in front of the building. Tell them where to go, okay? Yeah. Thanks. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. The weather had turned exceedingly cold, and consequently it had been a quiet night in the precinct. Cold weather, like rain, keeps the troublemakers off the streets. After my meal, I had gone out on patrol of the precinct in sector car number two with patrolman William Coley as operator, and I remained away from the station house until nearly 10 p.m., inspecting various conditions in the precinct and responding to several radio calls along with the sector cars and the sergeant. At 9.50, a call came over the air to ring into the station house. I instructed Patrolman Coley to stop at the nearest call box. Lieutenant Gorman, the desk officer, informed me that Lieutenant Matt King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, wanted to see me as soon as possible on an urgent matter. I told the desk officer to inform Lieutenant King that I was on my way in. I instructed Patrolman Coley to drive to the station house, where, after stopping at the desk to sign the blotter, I walked through the back room, up the stairs to the second floor and into the office of the 21st Detective Squad. Hello, Captain. Hello. Where's Lieutenant King? In his office, Captain. Uh, he asked me to ring in there when you got here. Okay. Who's with him? Fitzpatrick, Captain, and a suspect. Sergeant, would you ring Lieutenant King's line? Yeah, thank you. What's doing tonight, Pete? Oh, nothing too much, Captain. It's been pretty quiet. Battalion, Lieutenant. Captain Kennelly's out here. Okay. Yes, sir. He's coming right out, Captain. All right. Three guys were in here within an hour. Every one of them had his overcoat stolen. Mm, that's a sure sign of winter, Pete. Yes, sir. It's better than the calendar. Mm. Well, I'm glad you'd come in, Captain. It's all right, Matt. What have you got? Did you come over there a minute? Yeah. Pitts brought a boy in here. The boy's got a pretty wild story. About what, man? About a cop taking $700 off him. Yeah? Where? Up on Lexington Avenue. So, can he identify the cop? He says he can. Who's he supposed to be? He just says he can identify him. He doesn't know who it is. Okay, who is this boy, man? His name is Augie Bookham. Yeah? He's been pushing narcotics up there as long as we know him. He's done two bits on it. Fitz spotted him on the street and went over to talk to him. He lit out. Fitz chased him into a building and collared him on the roof. Well, how does a cop taking $700 off him figure into it? Maybe you want to hear that from Augie. I'd like to. You think he's giving you a straight story, man? I don't know, Captain. Vitaly. Yes, sir? Hold up my calls for a while. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Captain. Oh, Fitz. Captain? Captain, this is Augie Bookham, Captain Kennelly, commanding officer of the precinct. Glad to know you, Captain. You told these detectives a cop took $700 off him? Is that right? I wouldn't have called him if it wasn't. When was it? Tonight, about 8.30. Just a little while before he jumped me and Mr. Fitzpatrick. Where? Right up there, near there. 
He said he was standing under the marquee of that old picture house there, Captain. I was waiting to meet a fella. The car drove up and the cop got out to talk to him. The police officer was all alone? Yeah, all alone. By himself. And he was in a car? Yeah, a squad car, you know. Do you know who this police officer is? Well, I don't know his name. I've seen him around the neighborhood. He's been around a long time. Was he in uniform? Yeah, he's in uniform. What kind of car was it? Regular police car. I told you that. What did it say on the side of the car? What do you mean? What was written there? Oh, uh, 2-1 precinct. I saw that. 2-1 precinct. All the men in cars ride with partners. Where was the other police officer? Listen, don't ask me. There was only the one. How come he stopped to talk to you? Were you causing a disturbance there? No, I was just standing there waiting for this friend of mine. Well, then how come he stopped? Listen, I'm the kind of a guy when a cop sees me, he stops to talk to me. Ain't that right? Ask Mr. Fitzpatrick here. I got a natural attraction for cops. All right. The car pulled up and he got out. What happened then? Well, listen, I told these fellas all about it. Let them tell you. I don't feel like going over and over it. You'll go over it plenty. You'll come in here, Augie, and made a statement about a police officer being guilty of misconduct. It's the captain's job to find out the identity of that police officer. Oh. Well, you answer his questions. All right. If I got it, I got it. You got it. He got out of the car and walked over to you. Yeah. What did he say? I said, hello, Augie. He knew your name? I told you. Everybody knows my name. But you didn't know his. No, I didn't know. I didn't care. All right, then what'd he say? He said, when'd you get out? You see, I've been doing this bit over Rikers Island. What for? For same old thing. Misdemeanor, Captain. Reduced from a felony on a plea of guilty. Then what? Well, I told him when I got out, so he said, maybe I'm going back. He said, stick my hands up against the wall there, and I did. He looked me over. Oh, what'd he find? He found the $700. And what else? Oh, he had six quarters of eggs in my shirt. He found them. An ounce and a half of heroin. Yeah, so he said, Augie, this time you get the book. No more Rikers Island. This is a big time rap for sure. And I said, well, what can I do? So he said, go on, get in the car. I started to go over, get in the car. Then he said, wait a minute. So I waited a minute. Yeah. And the cop said to me, he said, look, Augie, you're an idiot. I told him I agreed with him because I can count on myself to get in a jam like this every time. So he said, why do I lay myself open for a felony by carrying more than a quarter ounce? You see, the guy's called with more than an ounce. He got some gimmick that he's got it to sell. Prima facie, something like that. Yeah, we know what the law is. Well, that's two to 15 years. Between a full ounce and a quarter ounce is still a felony, possession. But under a quarter is a misdemeanor. Just another couple months at Rikers Island. So? So I agreed with him I was an idiot. But I had to carry all that good because I was just going to make a meet. It was only my wish I had less than a quarter on me, or preferably none at the time. So he says, how would I like that wish to come through? I said, what do you mean? Then he says, supposing we only take a quarter into the station house. I was beginning to get the idea. I said, how could that be arranged? So he wondered, wouldn't I like to trade the 700 for about seven years? Yeah. Well, that didn't seem like too bad a trade to me. So he took five of the quarters and threw them in a pile of junk there. And he took the other quarter and the seven bills and put them in his pocket. And he said, come on. So we walked over to the car. Why didn't he bring you in? Oh, wait, I'm coming to that. We walked over to the car. He opened up the door. He was thinking, I guess, when we walked over there. He had the seven bills. He didn't need me. So he, he put his foot up in the car. He said to me with a wink like, he said, Augie, I got to tie my shoe. When I got my back turned, don't you go walking away. Well, the way he said it, I figured that was just what he wanted me to do. Well, Rikers Island is better than 2 to 15, but nothing is better yet than Rikers Island. And so by the time he got through tying his shoe, I was halfway down the block already. Then what did you do? Well, I stood in the door down the block there till I saw him get in the car and take off. So I figure I'm not seven bills, but I'm off cheap. The five quarters were still laying there on a pile of junk where he threw it, under the old movie house there. So I walked back to get it. Why shouldn't I? I just picked it up. I'm heading back out, and somebody hollers Augie. I looked around. It's him, Mr. Fitzpatrick. There I was with five quarters on me and not another cent to make a trade. So what was I going to do? I lit out. Him after me. Ain't that right? I took out our shot to EM. How far did you chase him, Fitz? Around the corner, Captain. I saw him duck into this tenement building. Started up the stairs and went all the way to the roof. I'd have been all right, too, except I didn't know the building. There was this big iron railing on the roof, so I couldn't jump the next roof. Did you still have the evidence on him when you called him? Yes, sir. Now, that's the shaver, but I was so worried about getting away, I forgot all about it. I was carrying a load. What did he say to you when you called him? He wanted to know why we couldn't leave him alone. I told him if he'd stop pushing H, we'd leave him alone. Did he mention the $700 then? No, sir. Not until I was on the way back to the station house with him. What did he say? He said he'd take care of me if he had the money, but... He didn't have the money just then. And he got high and mighty, so I told him about the other cop. What time was it that you called him, Fitz? About ten minutes after nine, Captain. And then it uh, would have been approximately between 8.45 and 9 o'clock that he met the officer under the theater marquee. Yes, sir, approximately. Would you say that's right, Augie? 
about right, yeah, approximately. Foggy, would you be able to recognize this officer that took the $700 on you? Any place, any place in the world. Fitz. Yes, sir. Take him outside, Fitz. Get it down on paper. Again? Yeah, again. Yeah, all right. Come on, Augie. Listen. Hey, what's all this going to get me? What do you want it to get you, Augie? Well, I mean, I'm entitled to some consideration, don't you think? You were colored with an ounce and a half of heroin in your possession. You know what that'll get you. All right, you got a cop that took $700 off me. You want to get that straightened out. You got me with an ounce and a half of H on me. I want to get that straightened out. I'll help you on that. You help me on this. We can trade out a little bit. Augie, you've done enough trading for one night. Take him outside. Yes, sir. Outside where? Come on, Augie. Come on, let's go. I'm going. Like a rough one, Captain. Yep. I don't know. He tells a pretty straight story. And with these bums, you can't believe a word they're saying. Don't kid yourself, Matt. He was pretty convincing. Oh, well, can I use this? Yes, sir. What do you find, Sergeant Warren? This is Captain Canelli, Sergeant. Yes, sir. How long have you been on TS duty? Just 8 o'clock, Captain. Have you taken your meal? All right, tell Lieutenant Gorman to get a man to relieve you on the switchboard. Yes, sir. Then bring the radio log and the telephone switchboard record up to Lieutenant King's office. Right away, Captain? Yes, right away. Okay, Captain. Have you got any idea who it might be, Captain? We will have, Matt. As soon as we find out who it couldn't have been. You are listening to 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Now back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. Allegations of misconduct by members of the force are handled according to established procedure. In an organization of more than 20,000 men and women, incidents of this sort are anticipated and appropriate action is provided. In the event of delinquency, a delinquency that is of a minor nature, machinery is provided for disciplinary action following a departmental trial presided over by a deputy commissioner. On a determination of guilty at this trial, the punishment can range from a reprimand to dismissal from the department, depending on the nature of the complaint. If, as in this case, the allegations are of a criminal nature, a full investigation is made and the facts turned over to the district attorney concerned in one of the five counties that make up the city of New York. When the charges against a member of the force originate with a civilian, the desk officer of the precinct enters the complaint in the blotter exactly as recited. A transcript is then prepared and forwarded to the inspector commanding the division who assigns a superior officer above the rank of lieutenant to make an investigation. When the identity of the police officer concerned is unknown or uncertain, the commanding officer of the precinct must conduct a preliminary investigation to determine the identity. It was in this connection that I instructed Sergeant Waters to bring the telephone switchboard record and radio log to Lieutenant King's office. Yes. Sergeant Waters. Come in. Oh, come in, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Uh, sit down here. Where do you want these, Captain? On the table, sir. Okay, Lieutenant. All right. Let's see your entries in the telephone switchboard record. For this tour? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, you've got five sector cars on the street. Yes, sir. Who's in them? Meister and Farrell are number one. Coley and McCarter are number two. And Hine and Ziegler are number three. Kane and Scully are number four. And Bolney and Barr are number five. Who's the operator of the sergeant's car? Lamar, Lieutenant. Uh, was the sergeant's car on a job between, say, uh, 8.30 and 9.15? Look in the radio line. Yes, sir. Hi, welcome to Metro by T-Mobile. Hi, my dad is in serious need of an upgrade. Yeah, my phone's a fossil. He needs a new phone and a new network stat. Well, when he switches to Metro, he can get an amazing iPhone 7 with HD retina display for just $99.99 after ID validation. Wow, $99.99? Bye-bye, fossil. Requires porting of eligible number not currently active on T-Mobile network or active on Metro in past 90 days. With validation of ID, an independent database limit for per account slash household. 32 gigabyte model only. See store for details and terms and conditions. Yes, sir, they were down at Bellevue on an aided case. An auto accident on First Avenue, child injured. They were at Bellevue from 8.40 to 9.05, then back in 7. Well, that puts the sergeant's car out of it, Captain. Yep. Sectors 2, 4, and 5 come together pretty close up there. Uh, sergeant, were any of the men in sector cars 2, 4, or 5 taking a meal around that same time? Yes, sir. Our and car number 5 was on his meal period from 8 to 9. 
Now, that means that Bolney was on patrol alone in the car during that time. Yes, sir. Oh, and McCarter was also taking a meal eight to nine. Foley was number two. And I was on patrol.